Hi everybody, today I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about my research and the isolation and screening of soil bacteria as a source of novel antibiotics. So first I'm gonna tell you about the hypothesis. Uh, my hypothesis here really states that we should be able to find a high rate of antibiotic producers within the soil due to experience in the past research of a large prevalence of them. So our findings should be plentiful of antibiotic producers, hopefully. Now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about why this research is important, why it's important to me, why it's important to you, and uh, why I decided to do it. So this research is very important because worldwide we are experiencing a antibiotic shortage due to um, evolution of disease and antibiotic resistance. Um, it's very important that there's more awareness made for this and that we are able to spread the word and tell people that it is an evolving issue. Now I'm gonna be telling you about how I went through with this research, how I did it and the steps that I took. So first, my first step was to gather a soil sample. I chose to gather my soil sample from my backyard and I gathered my soil sample using aseptic technique and I was able to perform a series of serial dilutions here as you can see on the screen. Uh, this is a great image to describe how a serial dilution is done and you can see right there directly on the next plate that those bacteria are, also, are already visible and we're already being able to see our progress and what we were able to just bring from soil. And it's a very satisfying, rewarding thing that we're able to do that that quickly, especially as a first time student, having never done this experiment. It's very rewarding to see that you're already making progress that quickly or early on in the experiment. Now I'm gonna be telling you about the master plates. Those bacteria that we found through the series of serial dilutions were then transferred onto master plates. Here in the back is a great image of an example of a master plate. And these master plates are very, very important to our experiment. They serve as a control where we are able to analyze the morphology and that can include overall color, size, shape, and just being able to um, compare them side by side. It's very important to have them all in one place and always be able to go back to that as a control. Next is my favorite part. I'm gonna be telling you about the spread patch antibiotic production. Uh, this right here, this image is a great, great image. I'm so glad that I was able to find this. It's a perfect image to showcase exactly how you can tell uh, if you have a positive antibiotic producer. Um, this halo-like ring that you can see surrounding this bacteria is really showing that that bacteria is able to ward off really anything that comes near it and that's the positive antibiotic production. And I was lucky enough to see this in my research and have positive antibiotic producers. So uh, yeah, it's really, really rewarding, especially as a first time student to have this uh, results. So now I'm gonna show you my results here next. So right here on this plate is my results. You can see just like those halos that I had uh, talked to you about on the previous slide there, um, you can see several, I had four in total antibiotic producers and I was very, very happy with that. Uh, I have some very nice halos there in my images. They're very clear. Um, and I'm sure even just hearing about it for the first time, you're able to see them. And um, it's a very rewarding process and I was very happy to have found those. It definitely took me a minute to get uh, warmed up to the idea that I was actually able to do that, but I was very happy with my results. Now I'm gonna be telling you a little bit more about the tests that I was able to perform on my results. Um, it's very important to not only find your results, but then learn more about them and being able to differentiate, are they gram positive, are they gram negative? Um, how do they uh, react to an EMB or a McConkie test? Several of these biochemical tests were done, um, catalase and oxidase tests were done to be able to differentiate between these different uh, antibiotic producers. And these are some of my examples of the results that I was able to find. Gram-positive bacteria, uh, lactase positive forming on an EMB plate, and the gelatinase test here shown as well. And um, this is just some examples of how I was able to test my positive antibiotic producers. So now I'm going to uh, tell you about what's next. Uh, what can you do? What can I do? And what should we all as a population try to do to uh, increase, not only increase awareness for the need for antibiotics, but also make awareness for how some people tend to 
misuse and almost abuse antibiotics as a whole. Um, it's very important that we continue testing for antibiotic producers. Um, like I said, I was able to find them in my backyard. And you may be asking yourself, oh my goodness, how did she find those in, my, in her backyard? I was asking my the same, myself the same thing as well. And I concluded that it's usually for one of three reasons. One, it can just be pure luck. Two, the soil in my backyard is actually very nutrient rich. Um, the site is actually where our old garden used to be. And also a fire pit where uh, paper, cardboard, all types of garbage were burnt. And I also have a dog on the property. So that also could play a role in that. Lastly, the natural composition of the soil could be in need of those antibiotic producers due to some chemical imbalance of the natural flora of the soil. So all of those are possibilities as to why I was able to find such antibiotic rich produce, producing soil. So I am very happy with my results and that is what we can do next as a whole to try to increase antibiotic production. Thank you so much.